Okay, so this here is your easy touch panel. So basically all this is is a breaker panel that holds all the electrical equipment for your backyard and your pool. And it has a built-in pool software in here to control your pool, okay? On your easy touch, if you have an easy touch four, um, what you have is you have four buttons. So one, two, three, and four. These buttons can be programmed to turn certain things on and off, okay? Your other four buttons here, as you see here, it says easy touch eight only. These buttons can only be used, if you have an easy touch four, to turn certain speeds on your pump on and off. So if you have a variable speed pump, like the IntelliFlow pump, um, you could set certain speeds to these pumps. You could turn valves with these pumps if you have actuator valves on your system. Most people don't though. Um, but these could be used to turn speeds or valves, but they cannot physically turn something on and off. So for example, they can't turn your pool lights on and off. You have to set your pool lights to one of these first four buttons, okay? So in this system here, uh, which is the same for everybody, our first uh, button is F, which stands for filter pump. So if you go ahead and push that button, it's going to turn your pump on and off. So right now I've got a red light on the pump here. So that means it's on. If I hit this button, now my pump just shut off. Okay, if I wanna turn my pump back on, hit the button again, red light turns on, and now my pump's gonna turn on. Okay, we've got the same thing here for this uh, for the light. So these are the pool lights in this system. So if we hit pool lights, to turn the pool lights turn on, and then vice versa, they turn off. Okay, we've got some spare buttons here. So what we've done is we've set a high speed setting uh, on the number two here. Your high speed setting could be set anywhere. It could be set four, five, six, seven, or any of the buttons. Um, these people here are using the high speed button uh, to vacuum their pool, to drain their pool. If they want to heat their pool faster, they go on the high speed or anything like that. Okay, uh, so. Uh, uh, for you, your standard system will set your filter pump, your lights, and will have a high speed button for you. Another common thing which you might have is a heater button. You might see here, if I push my button here, uh, you have a heater. So all that button is, is is giving power to your heater on or off, okay? I'll show you how to turn your heater on on the system here. Uh, but if you have a heater, when you're turning on your heater, you'll also have to hit that heater button if you have one. If you don't have one, don't worry about that, okay? So right now here, if we look at our main screen, so first thing you're looking at here is auto. So this easy touch system has four different modes. So if we look down here, we've got auto, service, and timeout. If ever your system's in service or timeout, change it to auto. To do that, you just hit the mode button until you see auto pop up here. When you're in service mode or timeout mode, a lot of features don't work. That's for us when we're working on the pool, we use those modes. Um, as the homeowner, you're just always gonna stick into auto, okay? Um, the next thing here, pool. So this is showing our current water temperature, which is 83 degrees. This is what your heater is set to heat at, is 84. So it's like the furnace in your house. I can change the temperature that the heater is set to heat at by using these two bottom arrows here, okay? So if I hit this arrow here, see I went to 83 and I can lower what I want my heater to heat at or I could bring it back up to 84, okay? Most people swim between 78 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been really hot these last few weeks, so the water's at 83 just naturally. If you want to heat your pool hotter at 85, 87, 90 degrees, that's fine. Um, but just keep in mind that if your water is really hot and it cools down at night, you're going to lose tons of water in your pool due to evaporation. So if you're planning on uh, being a, a hot tub swimmer, I call them, and you're swimming at 87 degrees, uh, you might want to get a solar blanket so you don't lose all your water. Okay, the next here is your air temperature. Okay, so your air temperature sensor, that'll be set by your electrician uh, outside your shed, or if you don't have a shed, it'll just be set outside. That's your, your air temperature. And then you have your date and time. Okay, and then at the bottom here, we have our date and time. So just make sure this is accurate. Check with your cell phone if that's accurate. Um, we get a lot of calls of people calling in saying that their schedules aren't working and stuff like that. And all it is is because your clock is set wrong in your panel here. Okay, uh, don't worry, this panel has a backup battery system. So if ever you lose power, it's gonna keep all the settings that you have set, okay? Um, first thing I'm gonna show you here is how to set schedules. So we can set schedules to all our auxiliaries here. So we can set schedules to filter pump, lights, high speed, uh, whatever you have. You can connect anything to this uh, to the system, which is the beauty of it. You can even connect deck lights, patio lights, garden lights, speakers, anything electronic you can connect to this, uh, get your electrician to hook you up with that, and then you can set a schedule to it, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to set a schedule right now. So what to do that, we're gonna hit the menu button here. We're gonna use the up and down arrow to go down to schedules. So right now I've got an arrow here on circuits. So I wanna go all the way down to schedules, hit select. Here you can see we have all our buttons. So spa, that's a spa mode. So this just comes standard in the system. If you don't have a spa connected to your pool, just ignore this, okay? 
Pool is our filter pump. Lights is our light button. High speed is our high speed button and so forth. You might even have heater for heater, all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, you want to, uh, if you look here, you can see that there's zero schedule set for these things. Okay, so pool, there's zero schedule set to this button right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set some schedules to here. So I'm gonna hit select, okay? When I get into this menu, I have zero schedules of zero, okay? And it's flashing none. So I'm gonna change this to new schedule, hit select. Now that gives me my default eight to five schedule, okay? So if you look here, I have one of one schedule. At this point, if I was to create a second schedule, I just hit the up arrow, and now I've created a second schedule. By default, my second schedule is also eight to five, okay? You could set up to 99 schedules per button. The only thing you have to watch out for is your schedules not overlapping each other, okay? So let's say, for example, we have eight to five, then we had another schedule saying, turn the pump on at 4 p.m. and run till 6 p.m. It would be overlapping for that hour. So if you have an overlapping schedule, your pump will turn on and off and it won't know what to do. It's not gonna operate properly, okay? Now it's very easy to accidentally create a second schedule. If I hit the up arrow again, now I've already created an accidental schedule. So I've got three overlapping schedules currently from eight to five. So my pump on the system here is not gonna work properly right now, okay? So if you accidentally create a schedule by, by accident, you have to delete that schedule. So to do that, you can see here my number three is flashing. I'm gonna hit the select arrow. Now schedule is flashing. So I'm gonna hit my up and down arrow to change this to delete. And I'm gonna hit select. Now I've only got two schedules, okay? So now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna delete my second schedule and delete. And I've only got my one schedule. Okay, so that's what we want. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create our standard three schedules that we set for every pool. Okay, so most people are on the smart meter. So if you're in Hydro Ottawa, that means that you're paying more money in hydro during peak hours and less money during low peak hours, which is nighttime and, and hours that are not the rush hour hours, basically. Okay, so to uh, filter your pool properly, what you want to do is you want to run your pool 12 to 24 hours a day. Okay, that will be enough to circulate the entire water in your pool twice in one day. So all the water in your pool goes through your filter two times in one day. So that's what we're trying to achieve with our 12 to 24 hour runtime on our pump. We're easily achieving that and more. Okay. So here I'm going to want to set my schedule because uh, this pool is located in Ottawa. They've got the smart meter. So we want to run on low peak hours. So I'm going to hit select here. Schedule's flashing. Whenever something's flashing, hit select or back to move to your next option. Okay. So I'm going to hit select again. So I want to change this to 7 p.m. Okay, so I'm gonna create uh, three schedules on this pool here. So the first schedule we're gonna create is 12 hours in the middle of the night. So 7 p.m. start, okay? And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn this off at 7 a.m., okay? So now I've got 12 hours runtime on my pump from Sunday all the way through Saturday, okay? Most people like to swim in their pool on the weekend during the day, okay? So I'm going to set this only for the weekdays, okay? So you can see here, there's lines on top of the days of the week. If there's a line on top of the day of the week, it means it's on for that day. So right now, Sunday's flashing. So I'm gonna hit the down arrow. So now my line is gone, okay? So it means it will not do the schedule on Sundays. I want to do the schedule only on the weekdays, okay? Or weeknights, I guess, okay? So now Saturday's flashing. I've turned Saturday off. I'm gonna hit the select arrow one more time. Now nothing's flashing. That means I'm on my numbers, okay? So now I'm gonna to wanna to create a second schedule because we only have 12 hours of runtime here during the weekday. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the up arrow. Okay, now I've got two of two schedules. I'm gonna create a schedule that's gonna run at mid-peak hydro, which is generally noon to three. I might be off on that, but check your hydro bill to see when your mid-peak hours are. I wanna add about three hours of runtime to this system so that we can run the pool about 15 hours a day, which is almost textbook, okay? So here I'm gonna add, I'm gonna hit select, I'm going to start our pump here at 12 p.m., so noon, okay, and I'm going to shut it off at 3 p.m., so now I've got three hours here during the middle of the day, and remember I have 12 hours from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., okay, so this is my weekday schedule. I'm going to do something different for the weekends, so again, shut Sunday off and shut Saturday off, okay, so now we're textbook during the week. We've got 15 hours of runtime during the week. That's fine. Um, what I'm gonna do now is hit the select arrow again. Nothing's flashing, it means I'm on these two numbers. So I'm gonna hit the up arrow. Now I've created a third schedule. 
this will be my weekend schedule. So when you're on the smart meter in Ottawa, uh, hydro is cheap all weekend long anyways, and you're most likely swimming in your pool during the day on the weekend. So we're just gonna do back to back 15 hours a day on the weekend. Okay, so I'm gonna start this at 7 a.m. because everybody wakes up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. And then uh, we're gonna go 15 hours. So we got uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, so till 10 p.m. Okay, and remember I want this only for the weekends. So I'm gonna shut Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off. Okay, um, and I'm gonna hit select, select. So now I've got three of three schedules. If I wanna save that, I just hit the back menu button here. Now I'm back to my other menu. Got my three settings set on the pool. So it automatically saves it. Okay, you can set schedules to whatever you want. You can set schedules to your pool lights, to your high speed. You know how to do it now so you can play around and you can customize your schedule. Um, just whatever schedule you do, make sure you're filtering your pool at least two times in a 24 hour period. Okay, so if you don't want to do some math and calculate all your gallons, just remember 12 to 24 hours will do it for sure. Okay, um, so that's it for that. So we're going to go all the way back to our main menu now. Okay. Um, so we know how to turn on our pump on and off and we know how to set schedules to that. The next thing I'm going to show you is the lights. Okay, so if you have colored lights and not clear lights, um, when you turn your lights on, your lights are on now. So if you had clear lights, that's it. That's all you have to know how to turn your lights on and off. If you have colored lights, the lights have seven modes and seven colors. Okay, so the modes is like, for example, Caribbean mode. So that cycles between a blue and a green and that kind of stuff. So to change your colors, what you have to do is shut the lights off and turn them back on within two seconds. So now my lights are a different color. Now my lights are a different color. Now, obviously that's annoying if um, you know you just want the color blue and you're cycling through, you're going back and forth through pool to check your colors and you know it's pretty annoying to have to do that. So what you're gonna do to speed this process up is we're gonna go to menu, lights. I've got modes and colors. Okay, so let's say I want a specific mode. Okay, I wanna put the Caribbean mode on right here. So if I hit select, now I can go away and you can hear that the panel here is actually cycling through automatically to go to Caribbean mode. So you don't have to sit here and press the button on and off a bunch of times. Okay, so now that's on Caribbean mode. If you shut the lights off, now that we're on Caribbean mode, and then let's say in three minutes from now you come back and you turn them back on, they'll still be on Caribbean mode. The only way to change your colors is to go into this menu and physically change it this way, or to turn it on and off within two seconds, like that. Okay, that changes your colors, okay? So if you want to set a schedule to your lights, let's say you just want clear lights to turn on at 9 p.m. every night, come over here, go to colors, uh, select clear, which is white, okay? Um, and then once you get to your white light, so we'll wait for this to finish here. Okay, so now we've got the white light. So if I just shut this off, when my schedule turns on, now my lights will be white. Okay, so that's how you control what kind of lights you want on your schedule. So just set them here and then shut them off and when your schedule tells your lights to turn on, they'll be that color that you've set, okay? Um, the next thing I'm gonna show you here is your high speed button. So if you have a high speed, a cleaner, a low speed, or any type of speed button on here, all you have to do is hit the button, okay? So if we listen to the pump motor right now, it's at our normal speed. If I hit the high speed button, the pump automatically speeds up. Okay, so now the pump's on our high speed, okay? If you have, um, let's say your, your system here has two speeds. You might have high speed, uh, low speed, um, something else. But let's say you had high and low speed and both were clicked on at the same time. Um, the system automatically takes the higher speed, okay? So if you're on low speed and you're saying, hey, my pump's not on low speed, make sure that your high speed's turned off because then your low speed actually won't turn off. Okay, um, next thing I'll show you here is if you have a heater, how to turn your heater on. Okay, so first things first, if you have a button here that says heater, you have to turn that button on. So let's imagine here that Auxiliary 3 said heater, I have to turn this on, that's first thing. If you don't have the heater button here, then don't worry about that, okay? Next thing you have to do is you have to make sure that your temperature is set higher than what your water is. So right now, regardless what I do, my heater would never turn on because it's set to 84 and the water's already at 84, or it's at 85 now, <laughs> okay? So I have to make sure that this is set higher than that temperature, okay? The next thing you have to do is turn the heater on inside the computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit menu, go to heat, select, 
go to pool heat. If you don't have a spa attached to the pool, don't worry about that. Go to pool heat. And see here it says heat is set to off. Okay, so I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna change that to heater. And then I can exit out of here. And now when I come out here, now I can see a word heater. My temperature is higher. And if you look here at your red flame, your flame here, you got a red light. That means your heater will fire up now, okay? So remember you need three things for your heater to turn on. First thing is your button. If you have a button that says heater, you have to turn that on, okay? Second thing, your water temperature has to be set higher than what your current temperature is. So heater has to be set to heat higher. And then you have to turn your heater on through the computer, which I just showed you. If you want to turn your heater off quickly, the quickest way to do it is to just lower the temperature, just like the furnace inside your house. So I want to shut this heater off quickly here. I'm just going to go below 83 and now my heater shuts off. So you see in the word heater just went away, my red lights off. So that's the best way to shut off the heater. The reason I like to shut the heater off this way and not push the button or just cut the power to it is because if I do this, my feet, my heater will automatically cool down for five minutes and then shut off. Okay, so you're not just cutting the power to your heater when it was heating, you're letting it cool down. So that's the best way to turn your heater off is just by lowering the temperature of the water. Okay, um, so you know how to use your pump, turn it on and off, you know how to set schedules, you know how to use your lights, you know how to use your high speed or your cleaner or whatever button, and then you know how to turn on your heater. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is the chlorinator. Okay, so I showed you the equipment pad earlier, what that was. So there's two menus for the chlorinator. The first menu is to check your salt level in the pool. Okay, so that's the first menu I'm gonna show you. The second one is to control the chlorine in your pool, okay? So the first menu to check your salt. You're gonna to go to menu. You're gonna go all the way down to the bottom to diagnostics, okay? And hit select here. We're gonna to go to chlorinator, hit select, okay? Now you're on chlorinator. So now here, this pool is telling us our salt is at 3650 parts per million. Okay, your ideal salt on your pool is 3,600 parts per million. Okay, so we're pretty close to perfect here on this pool. If your salt is 4,000 or 3,000, the cell will still work. It'll still say okay, but you want to try and keep your salt as close to 36 as possible. Okay, if let's say here we had 2,000 parts per million, it would tell me at the bottom here low salt. And you would also see on the salt cell that that would be flashing red. So saying uh, low salt. Okay, so... Keep in mind that this salt reader in the system here, this is just a feature for you to reference your salt into your pool. This is not an expensive salt testing system. It's just for you to know, okay, I'm roughly on the right number. So if you're getting your salt tested in the store and your salt is anywhere from 300 to 700 parts per million off of what this number is, that's fine, don't worry about it. The main thing you wanna make sure is that your light on your cell is green and it says good salt and you wanna see status okay. If you see that, your, your system is running fine. Don't worry about if your salt uh, reading here is off. This is just a reference thing. It's not, like I said, an expensive salt tester. It's just a feature that Pentair threw in there to kind of give you, you know, a reference, okay? I'm gonna exit all the way out of here, go back to my main page. So the second menu I'm showing you is how to control the chlorine in your pool, okay? So to do that, we're gonna go to menu. We're gonna go down to settings, okay? Hit select, and we're gonna go to IntelliClor. Okay, so IntelliFlow is the name of your pump. IntelliClor is the name of the chlorinator. Okay, here you can see I've got one of two pages in this menu, okay? So the first thing I'm showing you here, it says pool mode 60%. This means your cell is set to generate chlorine 60% of the time that water flows through it, okay? If you're testing your water every two weeks and your chlorine is always high, then come down here and change that setting from 60 and try 50%, then test it every two weeks. If your chlorine is always too low, you've got to bring that setting up, okay? Every pool is different. It's hard for me to give you a plan. You know, if you've got a pool that's 20 by 40, it's going to be completely different than if you have a pool that's, you know, 16 by 32. So you'll have to play around these numbers and fine-tune your pool and find your magic number. General reference, you're going to be anywhere from 50 to, you know, 70% on a pool. If you're lower than that, great. If you're higher than that, then, you know, that's what it is, okay? Um... Going up here, if I go to my second page in this menu, this is where I can do a shock on the pool. So that's called a super chlorinate, okay? So what that does is it's going to shock the pool for 24 hours and then go back to your original setting that you had set. So in this case, 60%. So to shock the pool here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go hit select, change the super chlorinate to on, and I'll tell it, yeah, run for 24 hours. Then I'll exit out of here and um, it will shock the pool for 24 hours, then go back to where 60%.
okay? Um, so when you're shocking the pool, you're generally just generating more chlorine for that amount of time. So you would do this if you're super low on chlorine, okay? Now keep in mind, you can also shock the pool by just adding chlorine manually to the pool. So go to the chemical store, buy a pouch of chlorine and just throw that in the water. That also shocks the water. The reason you'd wanna do this with the cell is let's say you're having a party on a Saturday and a bunch of people are swimming in the pool. You notice the water's getting cloudy and you don't wanna kick everybody out of the pool you can do this shock because this does it over 24 hours so it's a gradual shock so it's still safe to swim in the pool if you do it the old school way by just throwing a pouch of chlorine in the pool everybody's got to get out of the pool for a couple hours okay so the only time i would use this feature is in that situation if i don't want to if i want to still use my pool or if i have a party i don't want to kick people out of the pool i would use this shock system okay uh, the reason you want to get away from using this shock system is because the more you do that, the more you use up the cell and the faster you'll have to replace it. It's a lot cheaper to buy chlorine than to replace your cell. Okay, so I'm going to just switch this off for now and go back to the menu. Okay, so on this system here, I showed you how to do everything. I've showed you how to turn the pump on and off, the lights, the high speed, the heater, how to check your salt, how to control your chlorine, how to set schedules. There's tons of features on this panel. So if you see anything like solar or um, spill away, spa mode, all that kind of stuff, this is a panel that is uh, a basic panel that works for every pool. So if you add anything to your pool, you could always use those features. What I've shown you today is what's relevant to your pool. Okay, so that's it for these.